Our movie today is based on the true story of Liz Murray, and it begins with Liz talking about how her mom, Jean, is an alcoholic, a drug addict, and has schizophrenia. The scene then goes to Liz's sister, Lisa, and Jean fighting inside their house while their dad watches Jeopardy. Jean wants money to buy drugs. Liz has the money, so Jean attacks her as well. But when she's pushed to the ground, she pleads to her kids, and Liz gives in giving her the money. Jean quickly gets out of the house to buy those drugs. They end up leaving her alone, saying that she just wants to eat whatever's in the trash. In the next scene, paramedics are taking her mother from the house because of that addiction and mental illness. Liz is left with her sister and father, where she lacks care. She doesn't shower and stinks all the time. She doesn't really change her outfit, and she has lice in her hair. But there is one thing about her. She's so smart without barely ever going to school. She gets great exam scores just by reading thrown away encyclopedias. Her teacher sees the potential, feeling bad for her, giving her things like clothes and a notebook. Also telling her that she needs to go to school, or she'll call child services. When Liz gets home, her mother's already there. And she gets so happy, but only for things to fall apart, as Jean leaves her again. Liz is left living with her father, who who doesn't really take care of her. Eventually, child services come and take her away from her current living situation. Liz doesn't want to go, but she has no choice. They tell her she can go out in 24 hours if her grandfather, who her sister and mother live with, agrees to take her. But sadly, that never happened, and she stays in this group home for years, where her life was pretty rough. In the next scene, Liz is older, and she goes to her grandpa's house where she's going to be staying with her mom. She finds out that her father now lives in a shelter, and that they lost their apartment apartment building, including all their things. She also learns that her mother has AIDS, probably because she was sharing those needles with junkies. She ends up heading back to school and befriends Chris. They head to school together and hang out most of the time. One time, while they're at Liz's place with some friends, her mother comes home and has this breakdown. Liz takes care of Jean and puts her to sleep when Chris comes in, telling her that their friends have left. Chris opens up to Liz about her home situation, where she's a little bit depressed about how her grandfather also abused her mother and aunt before. Liz offers to stay with them, but her grandfather hears it and kicks him out, so she also leaves the house. And the two become homeless together. Sometimes they'll crash at a friend's house and even end up stealing food from stores. Liz has once again dropped out of school. But even after running away from home, Liz still sees her mom sometimes, and she can see that she's becoming worse by the day. Soon enough, her mother passes away. And at the funeral, Chris says goodbye to her as well, telling Liz they don't need that kind of life anymore. And she asks her to go with her, but Liz doesn't want to go. So Chris leaves in the two-part ways. Liz heads over to Eva her friendly neighbor who gave her those encyclopedias she found in the trash. She tells Eva that she wants to go to school. So Eva welcomes her into her house. After her mother passed away, Liz received a shock of reality, seeing as she now has only herself to rely on to make her life better. She gets a job and goes to school, applying for the semester. David, the principal, accepts her when she tells him why she wants to go there after she's been skipping so many years. But in order to enter, he needs to talk to her parents or a legal guardian. So Liz goes to her father, who's still living in a shelter, and asks him to go with her to school. After the school visit, Liz learns that her father's got AIDS, but he comforts her and tells her that, unlike her mom, he's clean now and has the medication he needs to live on. But Liz knows that's not true. As Liz begins school again, David can see how much potential she actually has. She answers questions right and aces those exams. What's good is that she wants to perform even better and do everything right. She strives to get those straight A's, even asking David how she can turn an A- into an A+. She goes on taking more classes, making up for those lost years, so she can graduate at a proper age. David would let her into school early, and she would stay late to finish her assignments and study after class. And she does all this while also being a dishwasher, so she can support herself. And one time she meets up with Chris again, and she takes her to school with her. But it's clear that Chris doesn't want to be in school. David shows Liz a pamphlet about a tour in Boston. She tells her that she can't go because it's only for the top 10 students. But David tells her that she is their top student, and all expenses are paid. Liz goes on the tour, and now she's at Harvard, being in awe of this place. David tries to encourage her telling her that everyone here is just another person and it wouldn't be impossible for her to get there. This makes her realize that, yeah, 
Why can't people like her get there? In school, she applies for scholarships, finding something on the New York Times offering $12,000 a month. She submits her entry, and Dawn asks her when's the deadline. She says it's going to be tomorrow. So Dawn asks why she waited so long, and she tells her that she waited until she turned 18. The actual reason being she was homeless, but she doesn't want to talk about that, and she's worried she'll be taken back to a group home. So she passes the entry and gets a scheduled interview. She goes to Lisa and borrows a coat, and Lisa's surprised that she's in school. She also tells Liz that she's going blind. On her way to the interview, Chris waits outside her building and she urges her to go with her. But this time, Liz has her priorities straight, and she drops Chris while heading off to the interview. Now, during this interview, she's talking about her life experiences and her expectations of it. She also talks about her mother and how much she loved her, even though she didn't show it. By being true and genuine to herself, Liz ended up getting that New York Times scholarship. In fact, she's the sixth person picked for that scholarship. She has an average of 95, and the top student is 150. She finished four years of high school in just two, and she did this while having a mother who's deceased, a father who's a drug addict living in shelters, and being homeless. And she achieved all that because of her hard work and determination. During a press interview when she was awarded the scholarship, she expressed how everything had changed for her, and now her life would never be the same, as she's thankful everyone. A reporter asked her how she did it, so she truthfully answers that her parents showed her the alternative. The reporter asked if she ever felt bad being homeless, and she says that it's always been her life, until she reached a point where she told herself that she would have to work hard for a better future. And when she's asked if she could change anything, she said she would give it all back if she could just have her family again. Liz is now able to go to college under a scholarship from the New York Times. She got into Harvard, and also gets a job at the New York Times along with her own apartment. The movie ends with Liz saying how she doesn't really carry her life anymore, but it's still there. Everything she did and knew, she may forget sometimes, but it pops up, and it's very hard to carry that burden alone. This is why she's telling everyone her story, so she can finally put that burden down and move on with her new life.